history has a way of captivating us, drawing us into the stories of those who came before us. It allows us to take a glimpse into the past, to witness moments that shape the world as we know it today. In this video, we have curated a collection of 25 historical photos that are sure to leave you in awe. Get ready to travel back in time as we explore these captivating snapshots and uncover the stories behind them. So, sit back, relax, and prepare to be amazed by these incredible glimpses into the past. Number 25, the world's first color TV broadcast, a blast from the past. Imagine a world where every televised image is black and white. No more vibrant reds, blues, greens, and yellows. That was reality until 1951, when the world's first color TV broadcast brought a spectrum of hues into American living rooms. The breakthrough came courtesy of the Columbia Broadcasting System, CBS. The network had been experimenting with color television as early as the 1940s, and in 1950, the Federal Communications Commission, FCC, approved the CBS color system as the U.S. television standard. This paved the way for the historic broadcast on June 25, 1951. The broadcast was a variety show called Premiere, and it featured a variety of performers, including Ethel Merman, George Burns and Gracie Allen, and The Rockets. The show was a huge success, and it helped to usher in a new era of color television. Of course, color television wasn't instantly available to everyone. In fact, it took several years for the technology to become affordable and widespread. But the 1951 broadcast of Premiere was a major turning point, and it helped to change the way we watch TV forever. Number 24, The Carrington Event, When the Sun Fried Our Telegraphs In 1859, the sun unleashed a powerful solar flare that fried our telegraphs and lit up the night sky with auroras. It was called the Carrington Event, and it was one of the most significant solar storms in history. The Carrington event was so powerful because it hit Earth's magnetic field at just the right angle. The magnetic field channeled the energy of the solar flare into the atmosphere, causing a geomagnetic storm. The geomagnetic storm caused widespread disruption. Telegraph systems across Europe and North America went haywire, with operators reporting sparks flying from their equipment and even setting fire to telegraph papers. The auroras were so bright that they were visible as far south as the Caribbean. In today's technologically reliant society, a solar storm of the Carrington event's magnitude would have catastrophic consequences. It could disrupt power grids, satellite communications, and digital networks. It would be a major wake-up call for our planet's vulnerability to space weather events. So next time you're enjoying a nice, quiet night under the stars, take a moment to think about the Carrington event. Number 23, Women Boxing on a Roof, A Bold Challenge to Gender Norms In the world of 1930s America, the concept of women boxing was far from mainstream. Women's participation in the sport was largely suppressed as it was seen as unfeminine and inappropriate. But one photograph from this era boldly challenges these norms. The image, taken by photographer H. Armstrong Roberts, captures two women in a boxing match on a rooftop. They are dressed in their swimsuits and wearing boxing gloves. They are surrounded by a group of cheering onlookers, their expressions one of determination and fierce focus. The women in this photo are breaking down barriers. They are showing the world that women can be strong, athletic, and competitive. They are also challenging the idea that women should be confined to traditional gender roles. This photo is a reminder that progress doesn't happen overnight. It takes brave women who are willing to step outside the box and challenge the status quo. These women are paving the way for future generations of women boxers. Number 22, X-Ray Specs, The Ultimate Scam of the 1940s In 1949, a novel item hit the American market promising to empower its users with X-Ray vision. Advertisements in comic books and novelty catalogs featured children and teenagers using the X-ray specs to see through solid objects, clothing, and even skin. Of course, such a claim was pure fantasy. The X-ray specs worked on a simple optical illusion using feathered edges to create a blurry, doubled vision that gave the impression of seeing through objects. But even though the X-ray specs couldn't offer true X-ray vision, they became a cultural icon. They were a testament to the power of marketing and a playful nod to our collective desire for superhuman abilities. Even today, the X-ray specs are remembered as a quintessential piece of 20th-century pop culture. 
They're a whimsical product of an age that dreamed of a future where the impossible could become possible. Number 21, Christine Chubbuck, the reporter who shot herself on live TV. In 1974, Christine Chubbuck made history when she became the first person to die by suicide on a live television broadcast. The 29-year-old news reporter had been struggling with depression and loneliness for years, and she ultimately decided to take her own life in the most public way possible. Chubbuck's suicide shocked the world and sparked a national conversation about mental health awareness. It also raised questions about the responsibility of news media in their coverage of such events. Some people argued that the news should not have aired Chubbuck's suicide, while others felt that it was important to show the reality of mental illness. In the years since Chubbuck's death, there has been a growing movement to increase mental health awareness and support in the workplace. Many companies now offer employees access to mental health resources, and there is a greater understanding of the importance of seeking help for mental health problems. Number 20, Hubert the Hippo, Cincinnati's Unexpected Celebrity You wouldn't expect to find a hippopotamus in the heart of Cincinnati, Ohio. But for a time, that was exactly the case. Hubert was a fully grown Nile hippopotamus who became an unexpected resident of the Cincinnati Zoo in the early 1900s. He was brought to the zoo as a gift from a traveling circus, and he quickly became a local celebrity. Hubert was a bit of a troublemaker. He was known for his mischievous antics, such as breaking out of his enclosure and taking a swim in the zoo's moat. He even once managed to sneak into the zoo's gift shop and eat a bunch of chocolate. But Hubert was also a beloved member of the community. He was always happy to see visitors, and he loved to pose for photos. He even had his own fan club, the Hubert Hippopotamus Fan Club. Hubert lived at the Cincinnati Zoo for over 20 years. He died in 1954 but his legacy lives on. He is still remembered as one of the most beloved animals in the zoo's history. Number 19, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge Collapse, When Gertie Galloped Too Hard The Tacoma Narrows Bridge was a beautiful suspension bridge that opened in July 1940. It was the third longest of its kind in the world, and it was a marvel of engineering. But the bridge had one big problem, it was too flexible. In windy conditions, the bridge would sway and vibrate like a giant tuning fork. People started calling it Galloping Gertie. On November 7, 1940, a strong windstorm hit the Tacoma Narrows. Gertie started to sway and vibrate even more. Soon, the bridge was bucking and twisting like a rodeo bronco. The bridge's engineers tried to save it, but it was no use. Gertie collapsed into the Narrows, killing one dog. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge collapse was a major engineering disaster. But it also taught us a valuable lesson, bridges need to be designed to withstand wind and other environmental factors. Number 18, The Dancing Plague of 1518, A Dance Party That Got Out of Hand In July 1518, the city of Strasbourg was rocked by a bizarre event that would go down in history as the Dancing Plague. It all started when a woman named Frau Trophia began dancing in the streets. She danced for days and nights on end, without stopping. Soon, others started to join in, and before long, there were hundreds of people dancing uncontrollably in the streets. No one knows for sure what caused the dancing plague. Some theories suggest that it was a form of mass hysteria, brought on by the stress of living in a time of famine and disease. Others believe that it was caused by ergot poisoning, a condition that can be caused by eating bread made from moldy rye. Ergot poisoning can cause hallucinations, convulsions, and other symptoms that could have made people feel like they were dancing. Whatever the cause, the dancing plague was a truly bizarre event. People danced until they collapsed from exhaustion, and in some cases, they even died. The whole thing was a bit like a giant dance party that got out of hand. Number 17, Einstein's Office, a time capsule of a genius. Albert Einstein was a genius but he was also a bit of a slob. Hours after his death on April 18, 1955, Life magazine photographer Ralph Morse captured an image of Einstein's office exactly as he left it. The photograph reveals a room frozen in time, filled with scribbled chalkboards, stacks of papers, books, and Einstein's smoking pipe. It's a poignant image, a time capsule of a genius at work. Einstein's office is a mess. There are papers everywhere, and the chalkboards are covered in equations that only Einstein could understand. But that's what made Einstein so great. 
He was a brilliant scientist, but he was also a free thinker. He didn't care about the rules or the conventions, he just wanted to learn and to understand the universe. Number 16, The Popsicle, A Sweet Success Story One of the most enduring treats of summertime, The Popsicle, was invented by an 11-year-old boy named Frank Epperson in 1905. Frank was mixing a soda powder with water in a glass on his back porch one cold night when he accidentally left the glass outside with a stirring stick in it. The next morning, he found that the mixture had frozen solid, and the stirring stick had acted as a handle. Frank was so excited about his discovery that he started making popsicles for his friends and family. He called them epsicles, but they didn't really catch on. It wasn't until 1923, when Frank was a grown man with children of his own, that he decided to apply for a patent for his frozen confectionery. His children, who fondly referred to the treat as Pop Cycle, inspired him to rename it to the now universally recognized Popsicle. Number 15, The Great Emu War, When Australia Declared War on Flightless Birds In the early 1930s, Australia was in the midst of the Great Depression. Farmers in the Campion region were struggling to make ends meet, and their crops were being destroyed by a horde of emus. The emus were migrating in search of food and water, and they were wreaking havoc on the farmers' land. The farmers were desperate, so they turned to the government for help. The government responded by sending in the military to fight the emus. It was a strange sight, a bunch of soldiers armed with machine guns, chasing after a flock of flightless birds. The war didn't go well for the soldiers. The emus were too fast and too agile for them. The soldiers fired thousands of rounds of ammunition, but they only managed to kill a few emus. In the end, the emus won the war, and the farmers were left to pick up the pieces. Number 14, Pluto, a planet no more? In 2006, the International Astronomical Union, IAU, made a controversial decision to redefine the term planet. As a result, Pluto was stripped of its planetary status and demoted to a dwarf planet. This decision came as a shock to many people, who had grown up learning that there were nine planets in our solar system. But the IAU argued that Pluto did not meet the new definition of a planet, which requires an object to have cleared its orbit of other debris. Pluto shares its orbit with many other objects in the Kuiper belt, so it doesn't meet this criterion. Some people were outraged by Pluto's demotion, and they continue to argue that it should be restored to planetary status. But the IAU is standing by its decision, and it seems unlikely that Pluto will ever be a planet again. So, is Pluto a planet or not? That's a question that each individual will have to answer for themselves. But one thing is for sure, Pluto is still a fascinating and mysterious object, and it will continue to capture our imaginations for years to come. Number 13, The Radium Girls when glowing in the dark was a bad thing. In the early 20th century, radium was a new and exciting discovery. This glow-in-the-dark element was touted as a wonder substance, finding uses in everything from watch dials to health tonics. Among the workforce using radium were the radium girls, young women hired to paint watch dials with radium-infused paint. The work was intricate, and to keep their brushes pointed, the women would often lick the tips of the brushes. Unbeknownst to them, each time they did so, they were ingesting radium. Over time, many developed horrific health problems, including bone fractures, anemia, and necrosis, a condition that became known as radium jaw. The story of the radium girls is a stark reminder of the risks of unchecked industrial progress. It is also a testament to the courage of the workers who, despite suffering from the consequences of corporate and scientific negligence, stood up for their rights and the rights of future generations. Their story remains a significant chapter in the history of occupational health and safety. Number 12, Topsy the Elephant, A Tragic Tale of Animal Abuse Topsy the Elephant was a celebrity in her day, but not for the reasons you might think. She was famous for being a bad elephant. Topsy was brought to the United States as a young calf and was later owned by the Forpaw Circus. As she grew older and more difficult to manage, she developed a reputation for being aggressive. She even killed a few people. Topsy's tragic fame peaked after she was sold to Coney Island Sea Lion Park. One day, she snapped and killed a trainer. The park owners decided to put her to death. They originally planned to hang her, but the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, ASBCA, objected. 
They said that hanging was too cruel. So the park owners decided to electrocute her instead. Topsy's death was a public spectacle. A crowd of people gathered to watch her die. She was given a carrot laced with potassium cyanide, and then she was electrocuted. Today, we would never dream of electrocuting an elephant. We know that animals deserve to be treated with respect. But Topsy's story is a reminder of how far we still have to go in terms of animal welfare. Number 11, Otzi the Iceman, a frozen time capsule. In 1991, two hikers in the Otztal Alps made a startling discovery, a mummified man embedded in the ice. The hikers, Helmut and Erica Simon, thought they had found a recently deceased mountaineer, but they soon realized that this man had been dead for over 5,000 years. He was nicknamed Otzi, the Iceman. Otzi's state of preservation was incredible. His skin, hair, and clothing were still intact, and even his stomach contents were still there. This gave scientists a unique opportunity to learn about life in the Copper Age. They were able to see what Otzi ate, what he wore, and what tools he used. They even found evidence of heart disease in his arteries, which suggests that he was not in the best of health. The discovery of Otzi the Iceman was one of the most significant archaeological finds of the 20th century. It showed us that even in the most inhospitable conditions, history can be preserved. It also gave us a fascinating glimpse into the lives of our ancestors. Number 10, the London Beer Flood, when the beer came a flowing. In 1814, the people of London were treated to a sight that they would never forget, a towering tidal wave of beer, sweeping through the streets and leaving devastation in its wake. The catastrophe originated at the Moo & Company Brewery on Tottenham Court Road. A vat containing over 135,000 gallons of beer ruptured, triggering a domino effect. The enormous pressure unleashed toppled other vats, releasing an additional 323,000 gallons of beer into the surrounding area. The force of the flood was so strong that it swept away buildings, bridges, and people. Some people were drowned, while others were crushed by debris. The flood also caused widespread damage to property. The London Beer Flood was a tragic event but it also had a somewhat humorous side. Some people reported seeing people swimming in the beer, while others said that they saw people trying to catch fish in the beer. There were even reports of people getting drunk on the beer. Number 9, Dr. Linda Hazard, The Fasting Doctor In the early 20th century, there was a doctor named Linda Hazard who believed that the body could heal itself through prolonged periods of fasting. She called this therapeutic fasting, and she put her patients on severely restrictive diets. She claimed that this would cleanse the body of disease, promoting vitality and longevity. Dr. Hazard's methods were controversial, to say the least. Some people believed that she was a quack, while others thought that she was onto something. But there was no denying that her methods were risky. Many of her patients suffered from severe malnutrition, and some even died. Dr. Hazard's story is a cautionary tale about the dangers of unchecked and unproven health practices. It's important to remember that just because something is natural doesn't mean that it's safe. Before you try any new health treatment, it's always important to talk to your doctor first. Number 8, The Smiling Victorian Mourner, A Glimpse into the Complexities of Grief The Smiling Victorian Mourner is one of the most haunting and unusual images from the Victorian era. It depicts a young woman sitting in a chair, surrounded by her family. The woman is smiling, but her eyes are empty and her face is pale. It is clear that she is dead, but her family has chosen to pose with her as if she were still alive. This image is a stark contrast to the solemnity that is typically associated with Victorian death rituals. In the Victorian era, death was a common occurrence, and it was often seen as a natural part of life. However, the smiling Victorian mourner suggests that grief is not always a solemn experience. Sometimes, it can be filled with joy and laughter. The smiling Victorian mourner also provides a fascinating glimpse into the Victorian approach to mortality, mourning, and memory. In the Victorian era, photography was a new and expensive technology. For many families, the only way to capture a likeness of a loved one was to take a post-mortem photograph. This meant that post-mortem photography was not just a way to document death, but also a way to preserve memories. Number 7, P.T. Barnum's Fiji Mermaid, the greatest hoax of all time? P.T. Barnum was a master showman, and he knew how to get people talking. 
In 1842, he created a sensation with his exhibition of the Fiji mermaid. Barnum claimed that the mermaid was a real creature, and he even had a doctor examine it to prove its authenticity. Of course, the Fiji mermaid was a hoax. It was actually a composite creature, made up of the torso of a monkey and the tail of a fish. But Barnum's trickery was so convincing that people flocked to see the mermaid. They were eager to believe that such a creature existed, and Barnum was happy to oblige them. The Fiji mermaid hoax is a reminder of our collective susceptibility to deception. We are all drawn to the impossible, and we are often willing to believe what we want to believe. Barnum knew this, and he used it to his advantage. He created a spectacle that people couldn't resist, and he made a fortune in the process. Number 6. The Magnavox Odyssey, the first video game console. The Magnavox Odyssey was a game changer. Literally. It was the first commercial home video game console, and it paved the way for all the consoles that came after it. The Odyssey wasn't exactly a graphical powerhouse. It could only display a few simple shapes on the screen, and it only came with a handful of games. But it was a start, and it showed the world the potential of video games as a form of home entertainment. The Odyssey was also a bit of a laughing stock. It was mocked for its primitive graphics and its limited game selection. But it didn't matter. The Odyssey had already changed the game. The Odyssey's legacy is still felt today. It inspired the creators of future consoles, like the Atari 2600 and the PlayStation 5. And it showed the world that video games could be more than just a novelty. They could be a form of entertainment that people could enjoy in the comfort of their own homes. Number 5, The Great Molasses Flood of 1919, When Sweetness Turned to Death on January 15, 1919, one of the most bizarre disasters in history occurred in the North End neighborhood of Boston. A massive flood of molasses, from a storage tank at the Purity Distilling Company filled with more than 2 million gallons of molasses, burst open, sending a 25-foot high wave of sticky sweetness through the streets at an estimated 35 miles per hour. The Great Molasses Flood, as it came to be known, was deadly. It claimed 21 lives, injured 150 people, and caused widespread damage. Buildings were swept off their foundations, and people, horses, and vehicles were engulfed in the sticky tide. The Great Molasses Flood is a tragic yet unusual chapter in the annals of American history. It stands as a stark reminder of the potential hazards of industrial negligence and the importance of safety standards and regulations in protecting communities from such disasters. Number 4, The Pig War, A Tale of Two Swine The Pig War is one of the most bizarre conflicts in history. It began in 1859, when an American farmer named Lyman Cutlar shot and killed a pig that was rooting in his garden. The pig belonged to a British Hudson's Bay Company employee named Charles Griffin. Cutlar offered to pay for the pig, but Griffin refused. He claimed that the pig was on British territory, and that Cutlar had no right to shoot it. Cutlar disagreed, and the two men got into a heated argument. The argument escalated, and soon both the United States and the British Empire were involved. Troops were sent to the San Juan Islands, where the pig had been killed. The two sides teetered on the brink of war, but eventually cooler heads prevailed. In 1872, an international tribunal decided that the pig belonged to Griffin, and that Cutlar should pay for it. But by that time, the whole thing had become a laughing stock. The pig war was a reminder that even the smallest incident can escalate into an international conflict. But it was also a reminder of the importance of diplomacy and peaceful resolution. Number 3, The Statue of Liberty, A Colossal Delivery The Statue of Liberty is one of America's most iconic landmarks. But did you know that it was delivered in pieces? That's right, the colossal statue was shipped from France in 1885 aboard the French frigate Iser. It took four months to reassemble Lady Liberty on her new home, Bedloe's Island, now Liberty Island, in New York Harbor. The delivery of the Statue of Liberty was a major undertaking, and it was not without its challenges. The statue was made up of 350 individual pieces, and each piece had to be carefully packed and loaded onto the Iser. The journey across the Atlantic was also treacherous, and the statue was nearly lost at sea during a storm. But in the end, the Statue of Liberty arrived safely in New York Harbor. It was greeted by a crowd of cheering spectators, and the city was alive with excitement.
The statue was a symbol of friendship between France and America, and it was a reminder of the enduring values of freedom and democracy. Number 2. The Mellified Man, A Sweet Treat for the Ages History is full of strange and unusual medical practices, but one of the strangest is the mellified man. The mellified man was a form of medicine reportedly used in ancient Arabia. The concept of the mellified man is documented in Chinese texts from the 16th century, particularly in Li Shirshan's comprehensive book on traditional Chinese medicine, the Ben Chao Gang Mu. It was made by feeding an elderly man nothing but honey until he died. The man's body would then be placed in a coffin filled with honey and allowed to mellify for over a century. The resulting confection was believed to have medicinal properties, including the ability to heal broken limbs and promote longevity. The idea of the mellified man is certainly macabre, but it also offers a fascinating glimpse into the medical beliefs and practices of the past. It shows the lengths to which humans have gone in the search for health and longevity. Of course, the mellified man was never a mainstream medical treatment. It was more of a curiosity, and there is no evidence that it was ever actually effective. But it remains a fascinating example of human ingenuity and superstition. Number 1. Pikrete, the unsinkable aircraft carrier that never was. World War II was a time of great innovation, and one of the most ambitious projects of the war was Project Habakkuk. The goal of Habakkuk was to create an unsinkable aircraft carrier made of pikrete, a composite material made of wood pulp and ice. Pikrete was the brainchild of Geoffrey Pike, a British inventor who believed that it could be used to create a floating island that would be impervious to enemy attack. Pike's idea was to build a fleet of pikrete aircraft carriers that could be used to launch bombing raids against German cities. The British government was intrigued by Pike's idea, and they funded a feasibility study. The study showed that pikrete was indeed strong enough to withstand enemy fire, and it was also buoyant enough to float. However, the study also showed that pikrete was expensive to produce, and it would be difficult to transport and maintain. In the end, Project Habakkuk was abandoned due to its impracticality. However, pikrete remains a fascinating footnote in the history of World War II. It is a testament to the ingenuity of British scientists and engineers and it shows what can be achieved when people are willing to think outside the box.